inspiring interviews with today's top landlords. This is the Rental Income Podcast. And now, Dan Lane. My guest on the podcast today hasn't been using traditional down payments as he's been building out his rental portfolio. He's actually used five different creative financing strategies. So I want to talk to him today about exactly what he's doing and figure out what these strategies are. So let's take a real quick break. We'll come back in 60 seconds and we'll meet Austin Miller from Springfield, Missouri. Are you having a hard time finding great investment properties? Unfortunately, the best deals are rarely found locally. Successful investing begins with the right properties in the right markets. Norada Real Estate provides everything you need to invest in the best deals across the U.S. Our simple, proven system will help you create real wealth and passive monthly cash flow. Get your free copy of the ultimate guide to passive real estate investing at noradarealestate.com slash guide. That's N-O-R-A-D-A realestate.com slash guide. If you're a do-it-yourself landlord and you're looking for the ultimate online resource to help you better manage your rentals, check out Rentler. They have everything you could possibly need to help you better manage your rental properties from taking online applications to tenant screenings and online payment processing. They have a special offer just for our listeners. After you order your first tenant screening, reach out to their customer service department and they'll give you a free month of credit card payment processing. For more information, go to tryrentler.com slash podcast. That's T-R-Y-R-E-N-T-L-E-R dot com slash podcast. Hey, Austin, welcome to the podcast. So let's start at the very beginning. What got you first interested in buying rentals? Yeah. Hey, Dan. Uh, thanks for having me. Sure. Uh, honestly, it, it really started back when I was was younger. Um, I remember driving around with my mom and, and we would see developers that we kind of knew in the boom of the 90s and early 2000s that were building duplexes. And I just remember asking my mom thinking like, so these guys are building duplexes and then renters are moving in and paying them off for them. And I remember thinking like, man, let's why doesn't everybody do that? That's, that's so simple and yeah. so easy. Um, but you know, as a, as a child, it was an innocent, uh, thought, but as I grew older and particularly once I got into the workforce after graduating college, um, just kind of quickly realized that working for a large company, I was building someone else's dream and didn't matter how hard I worked it, uh, I was getting paid the same each week mm-hmm. and I wanted to get something that I could invest in that would pay me back and then I could build a nice portfolio and and start building passive income with. So, um, sitting at my desk in corporate America is where it really, really hit me hard. So that's where I kind of got the thought and the itch to get started. So you were pretty young when you bought your first place, right? You were just right out of college, just out of college, 23 years old and green behind the ears. (laughs) That's great. Now, why don't you tell us what your portfolio looks like today? And then we'll kind of take a step back and, and talk about how you got there. Yeah, so I'm here in the Midwest, um, Springfield, Missouri, and I've got a four. I'm sorry, 16 units. So those are mostly single-family homes, but uh, multi-unit trailer um, in there too. So and that that totals a little over 1.2 million awesome. um, in value. Yeah. And what's really cool about your story is that you didn't have a bunch of money when you got started, so you used a lot of different creative financing strategies to build your portfolio, like how much of your actual money is in this portfolio? Actual money today, that'd be something I'd have to sit down and pencil out. But the majority, uh, I've only paid 20% down on one property. Okay. So, Uh, so uh, most, I mean, so it's very little, I mean, of, of, of your own cash that you've put into buying these properties. Is that fair to say? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, uh, using um, creative financing, other people's money, and several strategies in doing that that I've done over the years. Yeah, very and, little to none of my own money. So, it, what, what the reason I wanted to have you on today is that you haven't just mastered one creative financing strategy; you've used a whole bunch of them. Can you name real quick, like the, like, or maybe just tell me the strategies that you've used, and then we'll kind of take a a deeper dive into exactly what you did. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, just real quick, some of the strategies I've used, and they all kind of revolve around the 80-20 rule and the Burr method, and it's that's great. But getting the funding to get to that point, um, I've used private money. I've used hard money, uh, bought a house with a credit card, 
use a lease, lease purchase, uh, line of credit. Um, house hacking is a really popular, good one to, to get in and get started. So those are just ones that I know of off the top of my head here that I've definitely used and been successful at. So has your strategy been to use the creative financing to buy the property and then you've used the Burr strategy where you fixed up the property and then you've been able to refi it with a regular bank? Yes. Okay. So the creative financing on the front end and it, using the Burr strategy, it you've I always create value one way or another in the property. So using private funding um, or creative funding to purchase and rehab and in the interim and then go to the bank and get the long uh, the long term fixed rate um, or variable rate, but long term loan from a bank. Awesome. For anyone that's new to the podcast, the birth strategy comes up all the time, but that's basically where you buy a property, you fix it up. And then you you rent it out and you go to the bank and you put long term financing on it. So basically you're you're creating your down payment out of thin air by by mm-hmm. using some some sweat equity in the deal. So let's talk about the credit card. Like that's one thing that really stood out. How yeah. have you used a credit card to buy a property? <laughs> you know, it's funny you say, yeah. I bought a house with a credit card. Right. People look at you like you have three heads, you know. Like, right. Wait, what? Right. <laughs> so uh, I was, this was a little bit earlier on, probably the fifth, sixth house I bought. I don't know. I was looking for more ways to get funding. And I came across a, uh, someone online talking about balance transfer checks from credit card companies. And essentially it's the credit card company will send you balance transfer checks and you can write checks, uh, for amounts up to whatever your credit limit is. So <clears throat> I, I have a lot of credit cards. I'm a big fan of credit cards. And I started pulling them out of my wallet picked up my credit card and I called them the number on the back and I said, do you guys offer balance transfer checks? And they said, yes. I said, what are the terms? And she said, uh, 0% interest for the first year. I said, what other costs are there? She said, there's a one-time funding fee. I said, oh, great. How much is that? She said, $75. I said, okay, so I can make uh, a check out for X amount of dollars and have no payments my first year. And she said, no, that's not correct. You'll have to make a minimum monthly payment of $270. And I said, but you're telling me that will go directly to principal. She said, that's correct. So okay. I said, send me as many balance transfer checks as you can. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Just send, send them to me. Yeah. Um, so from that point, I said, can you increase my credit limit? At the time, my credit card limit was 12000 um, I requested an increase to 20000 and they went through a series of uh, questionnaire for about you know a minute, put me on a brief hold, and came back and said, sir, we can't increase your limit to 20,000, but we can increase it to 16. I said, okay, okay. great. So, uh, in a matter of about, you know, five, 10 minutes, I had secured $16,000 at 0% interest for a year. That's great. Now, a, a couple of questions with that. Now in a lot of parts of the country, $16,000 is probably going to be your closing costs on, on buying a house, but <laughs> where you are, like you're able to buy properties that cheap, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and Typically, those are your full gut properties, okay. you know, the ones that are in dire need of repair that are going to take a full rehab. <clears throat> so did, were you able to buy a property for 16000 or did you have to use some other money to buy a pro- buy, put, to put into the deal too? Um, so <clears throat> on this one in particular, I uh, found I talked to uh, called one of my wholesalers that I've worked with in the past that had a, a couple properties for sale, and um, he had one for 14000 and we negotiated, and I bought it for $12,000. Okay, so awesome. At, that point i realized i was going to use those funds um to purchase the property so now you've got the cash to buy the property but you've got a uh, i'm assuming when you buy a twelve thousand dollar house there's probably a pretty extensive rehab with that right yes yep so in this how did you how did you fund that uh the rehab yeah so after i went to um closing and i used the the twelve thousand dollars from the balance transfer check I then went to the bank and said, hey, I've got a house that has no lien on it, and I need construction funds. Okay. And they said, okay, uh, we'll lend you that. And then whenever it's done, it'll appraise out. And whatever it appraises for, we'll loan you 80% of that amount. So, okay. Awesome. Um, so so then you, you, you got the money from the bank to, to fix the house up. And then as soon as the house was fixed up, then you refied with them and you put long-term, uh, a regular mortgage on it, long-term financing, right? 
Correct. Yeah. Again, awesome. you know, we, the, uh, the rehab cost was like 45,000. Okay. Um, and so, you know, all in, we were at 55,000 and it appraised for 85. Now, um, I, I know some people listening right now are thinking, well, that's risky buying a house on a credit card. I, personally, I don't think it is, but, but I, yeah. th- I think a lot of people would think that D- did you consider that being risky at all? Um, you know, I, I didn't just because, you know, I had done a few deals at that point. I had a whole year to do the rehab and then cash back out. Um, even, and of course you always want to protect your downside. What if I can't cash back out and I have a high interest payment? Well, run the numbers and see if that's going to be an issue. But now if you can, uh, if you know what houses are, what the back end of that deal is going to look like and what it's going to appraise for, then as long as you've done your homework, you minimize your risk. Okay. Now, a- another strategy that you've used is private money. So tell me about how you've been able to raise private money. Yeah. So um, private money, some people will call it like the, the rich uncle strategy. You know, it doesn't have to be someone in your family, but everybody knows someone with a lot of money. I don't care who you are. I, I remember um, one time I, I went to my friend's house and he was asked, asking me how business was. And that's one of the ways I found private money is just telling people what, what I do for a living. And I said, well, real estate's great. Um, I'm doing so many deals. I just can't even keep up. He's like, well, what do you mean? I said, I just don't have enough funds to buy all the houses and I'm having to pass up good deals. And this next question, how much money are you looking for, Austin? And I can't tell you how many times I've had that conversation. Um, and, Another real quick story, I was at a, a networking event, you know, where you go and tell about your business and we're going around the room and you have your 30 second spiel. And I just stood up and said, Hey, my name is Austin. I'm looking for people with a lot of money. And I sat down and everyone kind of looked at me funny and I said, no, I'm just kidding. Actually, I, I am looking for people with money, but I'm a real estate investor and I'm looking f- to bring on more capital. Um, if you're interested in, in learning more, get with me. And across the table from me was a lady who was in her mid fifties wore average clothes, drove a pickup truck. She slides me a note across the table. How much money are you looking for? And I wrote back 50,000 minimum, preferably a hundred thousand. And she wrote a note back that said, let's talk. So, I mean, you just don't know, you can't ever judge someone by, um, what their capabilities are going to be. And it'll just shock you by who has uh, money and who wants to get in real estate. So what do you do? So if, Say with that lady that that you met, she's got some money. She wants mm-hmm. to loan it to you. What's the next step that you would normally take to to kind of formalize everything? Yeah. So the good thing about um, private money is obviously if you're bringing forth the terms, you create the terms, right? Mm-hmm. They're negotiable, right? And uh, typically, what uh, just talking to other people in the industry and what they're getting over the past few years, it's risen a little bit. But at that point, I offered 7% return on her money. And some people up to now, maybe 10%. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, another way of going about it is just partnering with them on the deal. Right. You know, they may not want any return on their money if they could have partial ownership in the house. So is and, your your plan with the private money to use that to buy the property, fix it up, and then refi it with a bank, or are you looking to have their private money be your long term financing? So the first okay. option. Okay. Okay. Yep. So the how fund. long how long does it typically take for you to to buy the, to find the property, fix it up, and then refi with the bank so you can pay off your private lender? It depends on the property, but if it's a full gut rehab three to four months. Okay. If it's a little less extensive, it could be anywhere from three weeks to six weeks. Awesome. Awesome. Th- that's good. And then are those investors, once you do a deal with them, they've seen that they've made money, they've seen that you paid them back. Are they itching to do this again after that? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's and, awesome. You know, eventually, they a lot of times they want to be partners and i've only done it with two because that's all i've needed and you know the one that i do still do deals with i've partnered with so that way i don't have to pay out of pocket and i do lose equity but it makes sense okay now the next step up from private money is hard money so w- why don't you tell us real quick how 
uh, what hard money is and then how you've used it. So <clears throat> hard money, uh, tip, I would prefer hard, uh, private money over hard money because hard money is a little more expensive, but it's also a little more available. You can go online and find a hard money lender within a quick Google search to where it's private money. You have to build a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, when I was just getting out of college, didn't have any money. I knew that I wanted to do a house, a, an investment property that year. And I had a really good real estate agent who was also an investor who hooked me up with a couple hard money lenders. And essentially what a hard money lender is, it's kind of like a small lender, like not a bank, but just a small company of somebody who has capital or it could be a large company. But my case in particular was a guy who just had uh, one, maybe two employees and he had a lot of capital to his name and he would give out loans to real estate investors who wanted to buy and fix real estate, Mm -hmm. right? Homes or, or whatever it may be. And so, um, that being the case, being a hard money lender, you're going to pay a little bit higher interest, anywhere 14 to 18%. And this guy uh, wanted actually to meet at the property to look at the property he's going to be loaning on because in a hard money lender's eyes, many times the property is more important than who's asking for the money. Mm-hmm. If the property makes sense, it, then it could it, – uh, let's go forward with the deal. But if right. the property doesn't make sense, then there's no way. Yeah, so, if, if the numbers are good – like they know that if you don't pay, if you don't perform, they know that they can foreclose on that property and sell it and they're going to get their money back. So I, I yes. think that's probably the number one thing that a hard money lender is looking at, that the deal is going to be good. Absolutely. Yeah. That's their that's their protection. Yeah. So, so now what kind of terms did they want as far as points and interest rate? Yeah, that one in particular, I paid 14% interest. So that was my monthly payment. And that obviously... When I bought the house, um, my monthly payment was lower, but as I was continuing to use construction funds over the three-month rehab, my monthly payment got a little bit higher. Um, and then once I w- was able to get a loan and refinance out of his private money loan, pay him off, he wanted an additional $2,000 just as a fee okay. uh, for doing the deal, which at that point, I was able. I had such good equity position on the house. I was able to roll that two thousand into the loan. So again, Perfect. no money out of pocket, yeah. other than the monthly payments to him for three months. Now I know someone is probably thinking fourteen percent. That's crazy, <laughs> but it's really not because you're only keeping this loan for a few months, right? So exactly. And are you yep. you paying monthly? Are you paying the monthly interest every month, or was that due at the end? Yeah, each month, and I think okay. it was over three months. It was like. 1800 maybe 2000 out of pocket. Okay. So that was my, that was my yeah. cost for the whole thing. And now, I've had several people say, man, 14%, I can't believe you'd pay that. And I'm like, well, I got a house. Right, you know? <laughs> right, right. You got a house and you didn't have to put much money into that. I mean, just the monthly right. interest payments is really all, all you were paying. Now, yep. the most important part of everything you're doing is getting that long-term financing once the house is fixed up. Have you had any trouble getting long-term financing or has it been become more difficult as you've bought more properties? It hasn't for me. I always take care of my credit score and, you know, try to be a good steward of my money and, and financially responsible. Awesome. Um, not, hasn't been an issue for me. No, honestly, Dan. Okay, good. That That's good. Now you have written a book where you go into more detail uh, about these creative financing strategies that you've used. Why don't you tell us about the book? Yeah, so the book is called Free Houses. And the premise of the book is that nothing in life is just truly free. You know, if I was to buy you a lunch for free, that would still cost you time, right? Mm-hmm. Around 60 minutes of your time. And some people say that's a free lunch, but to others, man, time is our most precious commodity and they're not willing to exchange it for food. So whenever I tell people I'm a real estate investor, they almost always say the exact same thing. Like, man, I would love to flip houses, but I don't have the money. You know, it's always a reason. But investing in real estate isn't free. But if you're willing to spend some time and effort, you don't have to spend money, right? So in today's world, we will label things as free if they're achieved without the exchange of money. And if that's the case, I've acquired an entire portfolio of free houses. So the book's called Free Houses, and each chapter is dedicated to a different strategy that I have personally used to just line out a, a roadmap to get into this business. Awesome. Well, if you're looking to uh, pick up a copy of it, you can uh, find a link to it on the website. It's at rentalincomepodcast.com slash episode 170. 
thank you so much for coming on the show. I, I really appreciate you telling your story and, and sharing some yeah. creative financing information with us. Absolutely, Dan. It is my pleasure. Awesome. Well, my name is Dan Lane, and this has been the Rental Income Podcast. We'll see you again next Tuesday.